I recently started a pre-engagement course, which I'm extremely excited about. I'm taking a small group of men and their um, foreseeable future wives, and we're basically going through their relationship and how they started dating and all these things. And what I find fascinating is when I compare where they are now, along with my clients that I've been seeing sometime, there are clear markers for couples who are growing stronger together. You can see it because as I've said many times, relationships are not stagnant. And the longer a couple works at their relationship together, the more you start seeing really positive signs of growth. And these signs of growth are just securing the two of them together more. You can almost see like the threads of the tapestry really coming through and getting tighter and stronger and thicker, which really excites me as a relationship therapist. I think one of the most important things that I can give couples to take into their marriage is the understanding that choosing the lifestyle together is going to be a really big deal during their marriage together. This is one of the reasons most divorces happen within the first two years, because people live together and they think this will be the same style they'll take into the marriage. And then when they get married, their partner starts acting different. They start acting different because marriage is different than living together. Living together only tells you if you're compatible. It does not tell you your commitment level. Marriage is the main key platform that will do that to a couple. And in that commitment, something else happens. People become more serious. As they become more committed, they become more demanding and they raise themselves to another standard. So let's go through the markers that I've seen lately that are really encouraging me and hopefully it will, you'll be able to identify them in your marriage and you'll be able to say, oh my God, like we have this, we are getting stronger. The first is you no longer avoid the tough conversations. Like there's no, in the beginning, a lot of times I'll see couples, especially when they're dating or newly married, they don't want to go into these deep conversations and they'll kind of quietly push stuff under the rug or just keep it to themselves because they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to tackle this. I don't have the time or energy and it's probably nothing. They'll rationalize it, whatever. When I start seeing a, a stronger couple, a couple who is really now working together and connected, I'll start seeing that they are bringing more things to the table. They're becoming more transparent. It probably feels a little unsettling to their partner, like what's happening? All of a sudden my partner is getting more critical. Not necessarily so. They may be getting closer to you and it can look like they're getting more nitpicky when in fact they're trying to deepen the connection. Number two, They've learned how to leverage their differences. Couples who are really tight and last learn very, very soon into the relationship who's good at what. And they don't kind of tiptoe around it. They're very open with it and they'll start praising each other. Well, you're really good with money. You're really good with balancing and with handling all the financial assets as well as the debt so that we can stay on track. And I love that about you. Whereas you're really good at organizing. You're so good at organizing our life, our, our work-life balance. And I really appreciate that about you. When the couple is going to stay together and they're working well together and they're getting stronger, I'll see more blatant references to this within the relationship, which is very encouraging and gets me really just so excited that I can be part of their journey. The third one, you aren't afraid to call each other out. You realize that you're each other's backbone. This is a teamwork. And so you keep each other accountable for what they say and then what they do with their behaviors. When I see that in a couple, I'm very grateful. Now, the way you call your partner out is important. Keep it respectful. Keep your tone 
mild and loving, but at the same time, don't let your partner get away with misbehaving or treating anyone, including you, with disrespect or disregard. They should put their phone down when you're talking and you should do the same for them because you are each other's priority. and You can see that very early in a healthy, long, long lasting, in my opinion, relationship. You understand your strengths as a couple. I think this is so important. You no longer get into your partner's territory. You don't try to micromanage your partner because there's a trust. You let go. You let go of the things you know they've got. And when, when partners step forward and say, I will take care of this. I'm going to take care of all the cars. I will fill them up with gas. I will make sure they get to the shop on time. Or I'm going to take care of all the budgeting. I'm going to make sure our bills are paid. I'm going to make sure this and that. When couples are forthright with that and they are actually come and say and the other partner trusts them, okay, you've got it, thank you, I'm glad you do that, and they can relax, then you can start seeing more also. The women will let their femininity be active, they'll be more feminine, and the men can take on more that masculine role. When you see a woman who's taking on too much of the load, many times she'll get more masculine in her behaviors. And this is because the guy isn't doing his work. And you'll also see what looks a little bit like the reverse. If a man is doing everything, more of his femininity roles are gonna come forward. So if you're seeing a part of your partner you don't like, before you say anything to your partner, you make sure you look at yourself and what you're giving to the relationship. And the last one, you now know marriage is a constant work in progress. You don't have that idea anymore, that illusion, that rose-colored glass, like we never fight, we always get along, we are hot for each other every day. Because you start seeing, you can desire your partner every day, but there's a time and place. And, and sex schedules don't always mix, and that's okay. You stop whining, you stop being that little, that little spoiled person maybe more, and you start stepping up. You're part of this relationship, you're owning it. You're less a victim of what your partner does and more a co-creator with them. I can see this very clearly because sometimes in dating, you'll have one partner who victimizes themselves, twists words so that it makes them, people feel sorry for them. And you'll see less of that when a relationship is growing healthy and it's strengthening. You'll see more and more of a pull together, more people working to make sure that everything gets done. If one person is stressed, the other one will usually do some, some behavior, whether it's giving them a massage or asking them what they can do, going to the grocery store, whatever, to kind of help buff them up. It's two people working the relationship and understanding. They're gonna have good days and bad days. It's not all gonna be roses. There's not gonna be ever a time when you truly will never be lonely again, will never get your heart broken again. All those things still happen in marriage, but it's more you're working with another pe person to co-create a relationship you love being part of. If this video is helpful for you, please subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much.